It shocks me to no end that even after making over a hundred fun and interesting monsters per game, the artists behind Pokemon still manage to make unforgettable designs for the human characters and trainers, and none are as visually distinct or overflowing with narrative potential as the gym leaders. It's through the gym leaders that the brains behind a Pokemon game get to paint a vivid picture of anything they'd like to communicate through a certain Pokemon type, as well as the culture surrounding one of many small chunks of each region, of which they're the head honcho. So why not join me in counting down my top 10 personal favorites? I see no reason to delay any further. Elisa has a lot of the same flair and love for an audience that we see in other gym leaders, especially those involved in the glitz and glamour of the Unova region. But Elise is a bit more stoic, despite how flashy her outfit, vocation as a model, and electric Pokemon are. She has, I think, one of the most important moments in Black and White, where she sees your rival almost forced to quit being a trainer by her concerned father. Elisa cuts in to encourage said rival to follow her dreams, and as someone who struggles with career paths, it's important to hear that kind of thing now and then. Elisa is also, I think, the toughest gym leader in that game. I thought I was so smart strutting in there with ground types, only to be slapped by the reality that her chief defense, Amolka, is also a flying type, leading to a rude awakening and a lot of resets. It's also unusual for a Pokemon character to have so many drastically different outfits. Her various appearances allow for an opportunity to explore a whole myriad of fabulous looks. It goes a long way in making her memorable and holding a special place in my consideration. In a game that doesn't do a ton with all of its gym leaders, the ones it does work with, Sword and Shield puts excellent stories to. Ryan is the first specialist to really draw me to dragon types. He's a pretty chill guy and at first seems like a vain airhead who loves taking selfies with his Rotom camera, which makes for some fun animations as he snaps his proud battle moments. But what really makes him shine is his relationship with Leon, whom he fancies himself the one true rival of. Ryan takes his position as the top gym leader very seriously, and drives himself on the idea that he will be the first to defeat Leon. All of this is tied together by his in-battle animations, where he roars like a dragon and throws his arms out as if totally feral. The excitement of battle makes him a total beast that we didn't see in the trendy Shutterbug before, which is a juxtaposition I really love. I always read his desire to face Leon as equal parts affectionate draw to him, perhaps even romantic in nature, and a desire to prove himself worthy by defeating him, adding even more context to his ferocity in battle and fearsome weather-based team. I really wish all of the cool looking Galarian gym leaders had the same love mixed into their character that Ryan does. Erika is pretty nostalgic for me. Tangela was one of my favorite Pokemon as a kid, and I was always frustrated it was never the main focus of an episode of the anime. The only remote spotlight it got was during Ash's battle with Erika, where her Tangela served Ash's Bulbasaur. I wound up buying the DVD that included her episode just for that sequence, and Erika became a favorite of mine. I've always been fond of her kimono spring vibe, gentle nature, and her hobby of making perfumes from grass-type spores. As a collector of colognes in real life, it's a neat touch. Plus, her chief Pokemon is the line of Gloom and Vileplume, Pokemon that are sort of off-putting by their crass look and smell, but someone as gentle as Erika recognizes their value and deems them just as worthy of love as any conventionally cute, non-abrasive smelling Pokemon. What a superstar! Even for a Pokemon trainer, Clay makes a big impression. Dressed to impress and clearly tied up with business he has to keep an eye on. His gym being a massive mine filled with gemstones was super memorable, as is his personality as a gruff but amiable man of business. I mentioned earlier that a lot of Vinova's gym leaders are the lovers of spotlights, so I like how Clay kind of conveys the production aspect of American capitalism, but doesn't downplay the potential for flair and bombasm that is arguably essential in entrepreneurship. Clay is a self-made personality who admires those who train and improve to build an empire of their efforts, which makes him perfect for Pokemon's strength-building world thematically. It also helps that Crocorock and Excadrill are some of Unova's coolest new Pokemon.
Opal's peacock fashion sense and opulent appearance are quick to make her stand out among some of her younger, more athletic-looking peers within Galar. Older trainers in Pokémon tend to be relegated to the wise personality, and that's present with Opal, but we see an idiosyncratic, almost batty side to her too. She also has a penchant for riddles, which is fun, because Galar is based around Britain and has a castle fairy tale look here and there. Since fairies are tricksters and often love to confuse people, it's fitting that Opal, the fairy type specialist, has a motif of riddles. Even her name, Opal, stems from a gemstone, Opal, that is sold at a high price in reverence for its age, just as Opal is. Just don't say it to her face. For Opal, rising among her peers among the Galarian gym leaders was a piece of cake. Get it? Like her Al Creamy? <laughs> Nanu remains my favorite character from Sun and Moon, a gloomy and monotone officer of the law who helps you track down the bad guys, only to drop the bomb on you during a boat ride that he's one of the kahunas you have to beat. I know he's not technically a gym leader with that in mind, but kahunas are close enough and he's too good to pass up. Plus, most dark type specialists, as cool as they are, are relegated to short-lived Elite Four roles, so it's nice to see one like Nanu so central to the story. Under his flippant exterior, you know he's got a big heart, as evidenced by his house full of stray meowths he's adopted. He's got a cool that sets him apart from the rest of the Alolan characters, but he never feels out of place in the tropical setting. Also, anyone who lends themselves well to Garfield memes is worthy of my praise. Flannery is quick to make an impression with her Dragon Ball hair and fiery vibes, but even outside of that, she's one of the best developed characters in a game that doesn't really pride itself on that sort of thing. She's pretty relatable, a granddaughter of an Elite Four legend, finding herself thrust into the responsibility of being a gym leader. As a result, the poor girl has a bad case of imposter syndrome and is constantly trying to take herself entirely too seriously to live up to the expectations surrounding her. Only beating her in battle makes her drop her tense facade and she realizes she won't make her family proud unless she's herself. I think that's actually a pretty poignant arc and matched with her memorable Hot Springs themed gym, she shows how rewarding an organic gym leader arc can be, even in the short time said arcs are often granted, she's far and away my favorite character in Hoenn. Blaine has always been a big favorite of mine. The Lab Coat Volcanic Experiment Area vibe is awesome. He always left a big impression as a huge powerhouse with his badass Magmar. He gives off a vibe as being more experienced than his peers, but he's never someone who comes off as particularly callous or anything like that. He has a penchant for riddles that I feel inspired Opal, and in some continuities was among the researchers who created Mewtwo which all combined gives him this very cerebral vibe, which is fun to go with fire types, who are usually hot-blooded and all blazed up in their trainers. His penultimate spot preceding Giovanni always left it open that he was a force to be reckoned with, very portentous and right in league with the big man himself, and I always liked to think that he was closely associated with Team Rocket as a result, maybe turning over a new leaf in recent years. He appears like he could be hard-boiled, but is sort of a genuine teacher figure to Flannery and Masters, and is just an overall cool and stylish guy who's always stuck with me. He would have been number one on this list if I made it just a few years ago. Whitney is mimetically detested because so many found her so frustrating to defeat in the games, but that kind of thing almost tends to act as reverse psychology on me and make me want to adopt the character that people are mean to. Plus, being widely hated is a heavier cultural impact than being forgotten, which puts Whitney above most recent gym leaders. I find Whitney so endearing, she's a typical amorous southern belle with a cute pink aesthetic, but she'll steamroll you with one of her most rough and tumble tactics her milk tank has. I love the candy-colored normal and fairy type she uses, and it's cool that the user of arguably the weakest type is actually the bane of a lot of players. Pokemon Masters in particular has really gotten me to love her. She's so excitable, but in a very honest way. I find myself always rushing to talk to her in the lobby. Why, Whitney, we hardly know each other. I guess this is normally where people would put honorable mentions, so here they are. What can I say? It's an honor to be nominated, but the main event can't wait a moment longer.
from your most heinous rival to the most touching underdog to gym leader story in any Pokemon game. I've guessed on and on about Bede elsewhere on this channel, but I think even without his phenomenal arc, he'd be somewhere on this list, perhaps even still topping it. Especially considering Fairy is my favorite type, and he and Opal put the XY and Sun Moon Fairy trainers to total shade. It's so nice to have a great Fairy trainer at long last. His battle in the Elite Four branch is the most cathartic in the game, as he interrupts the tournament proceedings to do something not for Rose or Opal, but himself, and he takes an L in total stride as he accepts that there are way worse things than losing, and that showing the grace of fairy types is all he needs, something I can totally get behind. His story is a story of growth that I adore in a game like this. It's been entirely too long since I felt this attached to a Pokemon character. He's only a gym leader for a tiny bit, but since him being a gym leader leads to the best battle in the game, I really can't deny that he belongs at the top of this list. I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, I hope you consider liking and subscribing, and that you stick around for more ramblings and videos coming out soon. Thank you very much, and have a lovely day.